Hello and welcome. My name's Sarah and today I want to talk about solving quadratic equations by factorising. As I'm sure you're already aware, there are a few different ways of solving quadratic equations, but I want to focus today on factorising as it's an essential skill at AS Maths. You need to be able to do this quickly and confidently, so if you're not quite sure yet, please do take the time to practice until it's second nature to you. I'm going to do eight examples. The first four I'll walk you through, and the second four, please do pause the video, have a go on your own, and come back and compare. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. Okay, here's the first example. Now there are a few different ways of factorising, and everyone has their own favourite. I'm going to use my favourite method today, and if you want to do that too, that's brilliant, but if you have your own way, that's fine too. This method is using a special cross, and it takes a little while to get it at first, but once you've got it, it always works. What I do is I take the first number at the beginning, here it's just 1 because there's nothing there, and the 1 at the end is minus 8. Now I draw a cross, and I put two numbers here that multiply to give that 1, so they've got to be 1 obviously and two numbers here that give minus 8. So I'm going to try 2 and 4. Now it's minus 8, so one of them has to be minus. I'll just try minus 2. It could be minus 4, but we'll just see if that works. Now the way to test it out is to use the cross. We're going to multiply through the cross, so minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, and 1 times 4 is 4. Add those numbers together, and you'll get 2. Now we want to get the number in the middle, which is minus 7, so not only is the sign wrong, but the number's wrong as well. If just the sign was wrong, you could change the signs of these numbers, but because the number's wrong as well, I'm actually going to change the numbers here. So two different numbers that multiply to give 8 would be 1 and 8. And I'll try minus 1. Minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, 1 times 8 is 8, add them together and you get 7. Now that's the right number, but the sign's wrong, so we will change the sign and put the minus on the 8. Now let's try that. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times minus 8 is minus 8, add them together and we should get minus 7, so that works. So these are the correct numbers now, and you can read across to get the brackets. So we've got 1x plus 1, that's the first bracket, and 1x minus 8 in the second bracket. Now, of course, there is a simpler way of doing these ones when there's no number in front of the x squared, but this method really comes into its own when there's a number in front of the x squared that's not 1, because these ones are difficult to do. You might be able to do this one just by sight, but I'll show you another example where this is more useful. Okay, because that's equal to zero, we can go ahead and solve. So we know two things are multiplying to give zero, one of them must be zero, so x plus one could be zero, or x minus eight could be zero, giving the solutions x is minus one, and x is eight. And that's that one done. Okay, this one has a bigger number than 1 at the beginning. We've got the end number there, draw the cross. Two numbers that multiply to give 2 must be 1 and 2. Two numbers that multiply to give 3 must be 1 and 3. All positive, so we don't need to worry about minus signs. Let's try this. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Add them and we get 5. Now that's the wrong number, so I'll try swapping these two around. 3 and 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 2 is 6, and yes, that works to give the 7. So those are the right numbers. The first bracket is 1x plus 3, and the second bracket is 2x plus 1. Solving that.
Okay, and it's absolutely fine as well to leave your answers as fractions. They're nice exact ways. If it's a third, it would be difficult to give that as a decimal, because it's a recurring decimal. So it's a nice way to leave it as fractions, especially when you don't have a calculator and call one. Okay, we've got some minuses in this one again. Now, can you spot there's a common factor in this one? And it's really good if you can spot that at the beginning to make life easier for yourself. We'll take a factor of two out of all of this. And that brings our numbers down slightly. Now you can just divide both sides by two because zero divided by two is still zero. So that will just get rid of the two on the left hand side. And now that's a bit nicer. Okay, first and last numbers. Two numbers that multiply to give two. Two numbers that multiply to give minus one. I'll put a minus on one of them. Minus one times two. One times one. And yes, that works. Okay, this one looks different to the other ones that I did. It's only got two terms. So I hope you recognise this as being the difference of two squares. Now if you're not sure of that, the difference of two squares is called that because it has two squares here, they're both square numbers, and it's the difference because it's minus. So this has to have a minus in the middle and two square numbers. Now you factorise by square rooting both numbers. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of x is x, so that goes in both brackets. And then the square root of 49 is 7. And then, really important, you must have a plus and a minus. If you can't remember doing that, do you just convince yourself that works by multiplying out those brackets and seeing how the x term in the middle vanishes? Because you've got 1 plus and 1 minus, they just go. Okay, we can now solve that. Okay, it's your turn. Please do pause the video, have a go at all these four. Be careful that these two on this side are not equal to zero. You will have to do a bit of work before you can factorise. Have you had a go? I hope so. All right, we've got one and six. Okay, I hope you got that one right. I'll do this one here next. This one's a little bit cheeky because there's, it's a difference of two squares, but you have to take the common factor out first. Hope you spotted that. So that's a five on the outside. Now you might have done that one slightly differently if you took the 20 over to the other side, divided by 5 and then square rooted. If you did that, that's absolutely fine, but you must remember when you square root at the end that you do get a plus and a minus answer. So don't forget that you get both positive and negative when you square root to get two solutions. Okay, this one here we're going to have to take the 5 over, get everything over onto one side, equal to 0 so you can factorise. Okay, in that one I got the numbers 1 and 3 the wrong way round the first time. So I did switch them and then it worked. Alright, last one. Everything over to one side again equal to 0 before you can factorise and solve.
I was really trying to make that last one a little bit neater, but I'm not sure I did. I hope you can read that one okay and that you followed it. Well done if you're getting those right. But if not, and even if you are, please do go and practice some more. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.